Hey guys, welcome back to the Amazonian rainforest where it rains at least once a day, sometimes two or three times. You can roll your drip tape up, put it away, hide all your irrigation equipment, you'll never need it again. Everything is just so lush and green, growing so fast, just like a bunch of weeds. And truthfully, that's what it is, a whole lot of weeds. It's too wet to work the gardens, too wet to cut grass. I just don't know what I'm gonna do around here. But over the past two and a half years, I have posted a lot of gardening videos, show some really fine produce. And many of the people would say that MHP boy, he is a right good gardener. He's a, he's a mighty fine gardener. Now, there are many days when I would have to question that. I do some really stupid things. And other people would go so far as to say, He's not only an excellent gardener, he's outstanding in his field. Well, again, on that gardening part, there are days when I have serious reservations about just how good of a gardener I am. But one thing is for sure, today I am most definitely outstanding in my field. Outstanding in my field, corn that is. Last time y'all saw this, it was about yay tall. I had just side dressed it, threw the nitrogen to it, bedded it up real good. And then follow that up with a uh, seem like two and a half, three weeks of steady rain just about every day. And this stuff is just took off. Anytime you have corn that's going to be up here, eight, nine, ten foot tall, you really need to pull that dirt up around the base of it. And that's what I did. Really pulled the dirt up there and give this thing a foundation to uh, set those roots in. That way the wind's not as able to, uh, to blow it over. I do have plenty of weeds out here. And when you get these big ones on the end of the row, Definitely try to get them up before they seed out because that's just a problem waiting to happen. Now I said this field corn gets pretty tall and it'll get way on up there. And as you see, that thing is already starting to tassel up top and you don't see an ear in sight. Most all of this right now, the tassels are already coming out and I got very few ears coming. I've had a lot of people question me lately about that. They say the corn is tasseling and they don't see the ears yet. Is that a problem? No, that's not a problem. Just give it some time. You take something like this stalk right here. She's getting way on up there. Got the tassel. Now you're just starting to see the little ears form. That's the way it's going to be. You get your tassel coming on out, and then you'll see the ears come out. But this corn right here is doing extremely well. I've done a good job with it. Let me turn the camera back around and look at the other side and show you this tomato patch, and I'll show you just how stupid I can be sometimes. I had a bright idea of planting a bunch of heirloom tomatoes over here, varieties I had never grown before. I had 39 different varieties, 78 plants. You, most of them had about two plants per variety. Put all them on this side over here. On this side, I put about 75 or 80 Rutgers plants that I was growing to be able to give people so they could do their canning this year. This, all I was doing was just trying to grow these to give them away. Now here was my predicament. Number one, I didn't have time because they had the other garden over there that had plenty of tomatoes in it and all this other stuff that I was doing I just got way behind. Secondly, I didn't know the growth habit of some of these plants over here. Some of them are determinate, indeterminate, semi-determinate and my question was do I want to put the big cages, little cages, do I want to stake them, do I want to do Florida weave? And You ever heard that uh, saying, he who hesitates is lost? If you hesitate long enough, somebody else will make that decision for you. By the time I decided it was too late for the cages and staking, I might want to try the Florida weave. Uh-uh, that wasn't happening either. This stuff was really starting to sprawl. So the weeds were coming up through it. I just bought me a brand new hook and crook heron. That's a real nice piece of equipment to do your hoe and the weeding and stuff. I got in here for about three hours, cleaned this stuff up real good, got it back up under control and figured I could actually make something of it after all. So what I did, got me some 51010 and all the open areas around the plants that I could get to, I sprinkled that stuff down. I also went back and put some Epsom salt around everything. Sprinkled all that stuff around here and then I come back with my little hoe and uh, work the soil to kind of incorporate the fertilizer a little bit. Anytime you're putting fertilizer out, it's a good idea to go ahead and incorporate it into the soil as opposed to leaving it laying on top. After I got my fertilizer mixed in real good, I had gone to a place about 30 miles away and found some wheat straw. My neighbor found it for me, so we come back with uh, 16 bales of wheat straw. And I started putting straw around these plants. I was just going to let them sprawl. That was the, uh, the best option I could come up with at the time. When I was coming on, we didn't have cages and stakes and stuff like that. You just plant a row of tomatoes and let them lay on the ground. The bugs would get some and you would get some. 
but I started putting the straw around these plants and I found out there was a whole lot of tomatoes in here, a lot more than I had anticipated. Looking up under this one, this was a little Cheyenne, it's a small determinant, and this thing was absolutely loaded with tomatoes. Just raise it up, put my straw up under there, and should be good to go. When I got to the Rutgers, they were the same way. Raised up a couple of plants, and those things were just absolutely full of tomatoes up under there. Now things didn't go exactly as I had planned once I got it all cleaned up. I had no way of knowing we were gonna get two, two and a half weeks of rain like this. This has just been ridiculous. And you know what happens with your tomatoes when you get too much rain? They start to split. Some of these big ones up under the bottom as we were picking today, uh, they had already split. The worms and bugs and stuff were getting up in them. So we're not gonna get the massive production that I had intended or had hoped for anyway, but we were getting more than enough to accomplish my goal of being able to get enough tomatoes to help these older folks out and get their pantry stocked back up. I'll show you in just a few minutes what we picked over here, but first I want to take a real quick look over there at the peaches and cream corn. That stuff is absolutely beautiful. Unlike the field corn over there that was like eight, nine foot tall and still growing, this stuff, you know, just over six foot, already making ears. A lot of them got two ears to the stalk. This is gonna be some really, really good corn right here. I was asked about the spacing on my corn these three rows, or what looks like three rows anyway, seem kind of far apart. And my original plan over here was to plant tomatoes. And when I started digging down, I knew I was going to have to lay these uh, tomato plants sideways, and I just didn't like the soil, so I figured I'd bail on it, put the tomatoes somewhere else, and come back and plant corn right here. And to compensate for it, what I did, I double planted each row. So instead of having a single row of corn going down each one, there's actually two rows planted about six, eight inches apart. So what looks like three rows of corn right here, in reality is six rows, and that's plenty thick enough for me to get the pollination and stuff that I need. There's one of them critters that's been eating. It looks like Navajo Paws done sent me a present. He's had rabbits tearing up his snaps and his cucumbers in the garden, and I believe he done trapped one and sent it down here to me. I appreciate you helping everything, sir, and all the kindness, but I really don't need any more rabbits down here, so uh, thanks, but no thanks. Y'all might have noticed I don't have no shoes on. I was out here sweating like a Kentucky Derby racehorse this morning, and then a shower of rain snuck up on me when I wasn't looking and absolutely got wet to the core of shoes and everything, so I said, the heck with it, took my shoes off, and I said, I'll go barefooted. Now, how is this for a contrast of colors? <laughs> got these pale white feet and the tan legs. It's pretty obvious my feet hardly ever see the light of day. As soon as I get my shoes dried out, I'll put them back on. What I have here are five good buckets, one, two, three, four, five, and a piece of one of primarily Rutgers tomatoes. These are the ones that I grew for people specifically for canning this year. This tub, these are the big beef that come out of the greenhouse. Got some squash, there's still a couple little zucchini down at the bottom of that. Got some uh, diva cucumber here and the uh, calypso pickling cucumbers. That one's a little bit big, probably need them closer to that size right there, but it'll still be all right. I've got a pile of trash and stuff on the truck right now. I need to go dump that and then I'm gonna come back and get all this stuff and go for a ride and deliver this to the people that I promised to help them out this year. I know some people think I'm absolutely crazy to do this, to just grow it and give it away when I, I could be selling it somewhere, but honestly, I have no desire whatsoever to get into selling vegetables. It, I try my best not to. Once in a while, somebody will come by and they will insist that I take the money or it kind of makes them feel bad. I feel like anything I can do to help them out will be well worth the effort on my part. We all know the people in the local areas who could actually uh, benefit from this and would appreciate it. Those are the people I'm saying, uh, help them out just a little bit. They're used to fresh vegetables. Uh, they know how to can this stuff and put it up. They will sincerely appreciate anything you can do for them. I promise you that. So I hope that was helpful. Y'all take care and Lord willing, I'll see you next time. If you found this video to be helpful, informative, entertaining, or just downright funny, don't forget to subscribe.